وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الإثم والعدوان واتقوا الله إن الله شديد العقاب My noble believing brothers and sisters may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you may he be generous and may he illuminate our path with his tawfiq, his direction to understand this noble religion of Al-Islam. I want all of you to contemplate on the tremendous hadith that is found in the Sahih of Imam Muslim and the authority of the noble companion Nawaz ibn Sam'an radiallahu ta'ala an, where it is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said al-birru Husnul Khuluq That Birr This characteristic that is found in the religion of Al-Islam It is to have good character Good morale Good behavior And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He informed concerning the opposite of Birr He said Wal ithnu mahaka fi nafsik And sin is that which lingers in an individual soul. It lingers in the soul. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, وَقَرِحْتَ أَنْ يُطَلِّعَ عَلَيْهِ النَّاسِ And these same matters which is sin, you find that an individual who falls into it, he dislikes that the people find out about the sin he committed. And then you find in another wording of this narration which is found in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad and also by Ad-Darimi with a chain that is good under authority of the companion Wabisa bin Ma'bad radiallahu ta'ala an, where it is that he said, Ataytu Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amazingly, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when it is that Wabisa came, he said to Wabisa, Jitta tas'alu anil bir, and Wabisa didn't have the opportunity to even say a word. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Did you come to ask about Birr? So Wabisa he said yes. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Istafti qalbak. He said, Then search in your heart. Al birru ma atma'annat ilayhi nafs. And this characteristic of Birr. It is that which the soul feels contented with. And the heart becomes satisfied with bir, this deed of bir. And then the Prophet وسلم, he said, Just like the first narration, and sin, it is that which what? It lingers in a person's soul. And as it relates to the person's chest, this sin, he is hesitant. Pay attention, pay careful attention to these matters. And you're going to see that the sunnah is indeed revelation. He said the sin, it is that which the heart is what? It is hesitant. It is hesitant with the sin, the sinful act. And then he said, Even though the sin, the people, they give verdicts to do it, or they make you do it. And inshallah, the explanation is going to come. These two tremendous narrations of the Prophet wasallam, we find that he, alayhi salatu wasalam, is clarifying the affair of Bir. He's telling us what is Birr. He's making a clarification to the believers so that we understand this tremendous act. 
And this word bir, it is a comprehensive terminology for all acts that are righteous. Al bir, it is a kalima jami'atun li kulli khisal al khayr. It is a word, one word. Within that word bir, you find all of the righteous deeds found in it. In that one word, all of the righteous deeds can be summed up in al-bir, which is found in numerous evidences, as is in the hadith and also as we find in the ayat, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to get a clear idea of this word bir, that which is similar to it is the word taqwa. Every week we define what is taqwa. Now, taqwa, as we keep stating, that it is a comprehensive terminology for everything which Allah loves. Now, from the actions that are outward upon a person and inward. And the word taqwa is similar to the word bir. So you find that in the word taqwa, this one word, all of these numerous righteous actions can be summed up in the word taqwa. So bir, it is similar to this. Bir, it is similar to this. So in the narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he defined bir, he also defined ithm. And in these two narrations, we find that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned the same wording, wal ithmu mahaka fi nafsik. And sin, it is that which what? It lingers in an individual soul. And you find that the word ithm, it is the opposite of the word bir. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ in the hadith, he informed what is bir, and then he informed that which is the opposite of bir, which is ithm. We said bir, it is one word for all of the righteous deeds. And ithm, it is sin. So righteous deeds are acts of ta'at, obedience, and the word ithm, it is the word for committing sin. And we find that Allah Taala also directs us to this explanation in his book. When it is that he said, وَتَعَابَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَابَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْأُدْوَانِ So you find the two words here again. That Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He said, and help one another upon what? عَلَى الْبِرِّ Righteousness. And also, التَّقْوَى Fearing Allah. And then what did Allah say next? وَلَا تَعَابَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْأُدْوَانِ and do not help one another in that which is the opposite to bir. Do not aid one another in committing sins. Wal-Udawan and transgression. So the Prophet ﷺ in the first narration that is found in the collection of Imam Muslim, the hadith of Nawas ibn Sam'an radiallahu ta'ala he said, Al-Birru husnul khuluq. That bir, it is to have good morale, to have good conduct. Naam? And we defined what is the meaning of bir. But then the Prophet wasallam, in this hadith, he's telling us that it is husnul khuluq. And that which should be understood as the ulama, they have explained to us from them the likes of our father and Shaykh Salih al Fawzan, hafizahullah ta'ala, is that the word bir. When it is that the Prophet وسلم, said it is husnul khuluq, it is to have good morale, then it should not be understood that bir is only to be good in conduct. But what is meant by the Prophet وسلم, here, that husnul khuluq, that this deed or this act of having good conduct, it is one of the greatest characteristics of bir. It is one of the greatest characteristics of bir. Just like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in the hadith, Al-Hajju Arafah. That from Hajj, it is Arafah. 
The Prophet sallallahu when he made the statements, we understand that the whole worship of Hajj is not only Arafah. It is not only Arafah, but what is understood, as the ulama they have explained, that Arafah, the night of Dhul Hijjah, on the plains of Arafah, it is one of the arkan from the pillars of Hajj. Or you find that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ad-du'a huwa al-ibadah. That to make du'a, it is worship. It is not that worship, the only thing is du'a, but what is understood by the statement of the Prophet ﷺ is that du'a, it is one of the greatest acts from the numerous acts of righteous deeds, ibadats. So similar here, when the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-birru husnul khuluq, then husnul khuluq, good manners, is not the only thing that is found in birr. Tayyib. Now, what is husnul khuluq? What is husnul khuluq? What is having good morale, good conduct? So the ulama, they have defined or mentioned its meaning. Our father and Sheikh Sheikh Saleh Al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he said, Si'atu al-bal wal-bashashatu fil-istikbal. Pay attention. What is good conduct? It is Si'atu al-bal. What is Si'atu al-bal? Si'atu al-bal is an individual who has good conduct. He has good conduct, but his good conduct, it is extremely rich. His good morale, his good behavior, it is extremely high and extremely rich. This is what is Si'atul Bal. Wa al bashashatu fil istikbal then this is someone who is cheerful with the people. He likes to meet the people. So now let's go back to Si'atul Bal. What can be the best example of Si'atul Bal? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, وَخَالِكِ nas بِخُلُقِ hasan," And behave towards the people with the best morale, the best behavior. Understand that the Prophet ﷺ did not command us with a matter except that he himself exemplified this conduct. So Si'atul Bal is found in the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. That the Prophet ﷺ, he possessed the type of good manners that would wear down the people. This is Si'atul Bal. He possessed such rich conduct and moral behavior that whenever he interacted with the people, it would wear them down. It will wear them down. And this is definitely seen in his seerah. That the Prophet wasallam, he was persecuted, he was harmed, feces were thrown on him, he was attacked when worshipping Allah and praying. His family suffered from hunger, starvation, loss of wealth, driven out of their homes. He was made to live with his companions and his wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha in the desert, driven out from his place of birth. He was stripped of his status with the people because of La ilaha illallah. He was pierced by a spear in his cheek in the battle of Uhud. So what is Si'atul Bal? When the Prophet wasallam conquered Mecca, the people they thought that the Prophet wasallam he was going to persecute them. He was going to harm them, execute them, and cause them the same pain or more pain than they caused him. 
And this is where the Prophet ﷺ exemplified Si'atul Bal. Because what did he do? He guaranteed that the people will be safe. And he made sure that no one was harmed. That the women and the children, they were safe. The animals were safe. The trees were safe. The city of Mecca was safe. Safer than it was in any other time of history. And this is what is Si'atul Bal. Or the Prophet ﷺ going to Ta'if. And the leaders of Ta'if, the nobles of Ta'if, what did they do? They commanded the women and the slaves and the children to stone the Prophet ﷺ until he bled. And so Allah Ta'ala sent to him angels that he may command that those people be destroyed. And again, the Prophet ﷺ exemplified Si'atul Bal. He did not command them to destroy the people of Ta'if for a greater maslaha that one day those people will become Muslims. And Alhamdulillah, this became a reality. So it is upon every single one of us noble brothers and sisters that we understand what is Husnul Khuluq. No matter what the people do to us, then it is upon us to follow this example of the Prophet wasallam. That we are rich in moral conduct. And that we return to the people better than that which they did to us as Allah. He said, And return to the people that which is better. Return to the people that which is better. If they harm you, then it is upon you to do that which is good. Or oh, as Allah wa ta'ala, He said about the Prophet wasallam. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَذِيمٍ And you, O Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is of extremely rich moral conduct high character and behavior O oh, as Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala He said لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْتُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَقَرَ اللَّهُ كَثِيرًا and indeed you find in the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Uswatun Hasana The most tremendous conduct The sweetest of morale For whom? For the one who seeks to please Allah And who is seeking out the last day May Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala help us to understand This tremendous quality of Husnul Khuluq بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم من البيان والذكر الحكيم أقول هذا القول وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله على فضله وإحسانه وأشكره على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. In moving on to these tremendous words of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, we define and we got a clear picture of what is bir. And there is no doubt that whatever we mention, it is not sufficient. But it gives the brothers and sisters an idea of Bir and Husnul Khuluq. Then the Prophet ﷺ, in these two narrations, he said, Wal ithmu mahaka fi nafsik. And this is something that everyone really needs to concentrate upon. Pay attention to this matter. He said, and the sin, it is that which what? It lingers in a person's soul. It lingers in a person's soul. And there is no doubt that we can all sentimize with this. Because there isn't any individual that is present here. Even though we are Muslims who can say that they do not commit sins. 
No individual has the ability to say this. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, قُلِ بْنِ عَالَمْ خَطَّى وَخَيْرُ خَطَّائِينَ التَّوَابُونَ All of the children of Adam. Yani there is no exception. They do what? They commit sins. So all of us, we commit sins. Some apparent, some hidden. Some major, some minor. Some that we're aware of and some that we're not aware of. But we all commit sins. But the lesson is that when we commit sins, what do we do? We seek the forgiveness of Allah. As the Prophet wasallam, after the deed of salah, praying, immediately after he prayed, what would he do? He would say, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi. And I seek the forgiveness of Allah. And I pronounce my repentance. This is one of the greatest acts of istighfar. That the slave combines seeking forgiveness from Allah and announcing his repentance. This matter of sin. Well, if no, nafsik. Sin is that which lingers in an individual soul. We commit sins and the one who is a believer knows that he's doing something that is wrong. When it is that the Prophet وسلم, said, Fi nafsik, what is understood here is the soul of the believer. The soul of whom? The believer. The one who is true in Iman when he falls into a sin, or he's committing a sin, he knows that he's doing something that is wrong. He knows that he's doing something that is wrong. Only the one that is a believer. Now, and so the Prophet وسلم, he even defined, he said, وَقَرِحْتَ أَنْ يُطَلِّعَ عَلَيْهِ النَّاسِ And you would hate that the people find out about the sin that you're committing. And this is a tremendous statement of the Prophet وسلم, A tremendous statement which every individual should use. Anytime it is that we commit a deed, and that deed we're committing is something that we hate the people to find out about, then know that it is a sin. Then know that it is a sin. Because the person who is committing that deed, he doesn't want anyone to find out that he is doing something that is haram. He doesn't want the believers to find out that he's smoking marijuana. Or the believers to find out that he's speaking to a sister on Facebook. Or that he's planning to meet someone at a hotel to fall into fawahij. Waliyadu billah. He doesn't want anyone to find out about this matter. And anytime we find ourselves in this affair, that when we're doing these deeds that we have to hide and do it because we don't want the people to find out, then know that this is a sin. This is what is considered to be ithm. As for the deeds that are righteous, then the believers, they don't hide these deeds. The one that is doing a righteous act, he's not scared that the people find out about his righteous deed. So this is something that we need to contemplate and reflect upon as it relates to our good deeds and our evil deeds. In the next narration, the narration of Wabis ibn Ma'bad radiallahu ta'ala the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said the same statement, وَالْإِثْنُ مَحَاكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ And sins is that which lingers in the soul. Allah al-Musta'an. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in this wording, وَتَرَدَّدَ فِي الصَّدْرِ And it is that which the chest, it doesn't feel comfortable. The chest doesn't feel comfortable with this act. Yani, the, the person's chest is asking all of the time, should I do this deed? Am I comfortable with this deed? And that is an, another affair that we should contemplate upon. 
The reason that we're stating this is so that we can utilize these principles that are set in the religion so that we can be righteous slaves. Wherever you may be, brothers and sisters, apply these matters in our lives. Whether you're in your home by yourselves, laying on the bed with your phones, or in the comfort of your living room, or in some private room in your office, consult your hearts. Consult your hearts. Because these matters are clear. The righteous deeds are clear, and the sinful matters are clear. When you're committing your sin, think about your brother that you laugh and you smile with, or your sister, or your wife, or your children, whenever you're by yourself, they go out to do some type of chore, and you get that time by yourself, and you fall into the impermissible matters. Would you like your wife and children to see you doing the haram? Would you like the brother to see that you're looking at fawahish on the internet, naked women and the likes? Would you like your brothers and sisters to see you listening to music? So you know that this is a sin. And this is a matter of extreme importance so that we can stay away from it all of the time. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Ittaqullah haythu ma kunt and fear Allah wherever you may be, wherever you are. We have to have consciousness of Allah, fear of Allah, taqwa of Allah, piety for Allah, revere Allah, be mindful of Allah. Because Allah is not deficient. He's not deficient. And this is from the most severest problems that we face as Muslims in the whole world. That a fear of sincerity, that a fear of understanding that Allah is perfect in His seeing and His hearing. Far less for our land that we live in, Trinidad and Tobago, where we're struggling. We're struggling as Muslims from community to community to understand basic matters of Tawheed and Ikhlas and righteous deeds. We're struggling to understand what is Islam, what is the me real meaning of Islam and Tawheed and ibadah and shirk. We don't understand these matters. There are people that claim to be upon the sunnah and they fall into some of the most severest of sins. Lying and deception and betrayal and cheating. People who claim to be upon sunnah and who want to carry the flags of the sunnah upon their shoulders and want to be the leaders of the sunnah. We find that they have Issues even understanding that lying is a major sin. So you find from community to community, the people they do what as Muslims, we're harming each other. We're harming one another. We don't understand what is si'atul bal. We don't understand what is husnul khuluq. Returning a good deed. Someone who is doing the act of husnul khuluq, then the people, they begin to love him for the deeds that he's doing. He wears the people down with his good manners and his good words and his thoughts, having good thoughts about the people. But we even look into our own communities that claim to be upon Sunnah and Salafiyya and all we see is hatred and animosity and anger and destruction and jealousy and envy. This is a clear sign that something is wrong with our Iman. The essence of Islam is not there. Ikhlas. The essence of Iman is void. For a person to say that I'm upon the Sunnah and then look at your brother and sister and lie upon them and cheat upon them and betray them and hate them and envy them. An Iman for another Iman. A student for another student. Because we haven't yet understood what is Iman, what is Islam, what is Husnul Khuluq, what is Bir, what is Ithn. We haven't started yet to even scratch the surface of understanding these matters. Because had we contemplated and learned these matters at the hands of Ahlul Ilm, then we would stay away from these affairs. We would stay away from these affairs. My noble believing brothers and sisters, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
في الله 